Hello and welcome to my March reseller report. If you haven't been around here before, I am a very part-time reseller building my business back up, but I have been reselling for several years and I did do it full-time for a little while. So at this point I'm building my business back up and I'm just sharing my results along the way. I think it's really helpful as a reseller to share my numbers and be as trans and be as transparent as possible about what I'm making, um, the time I'm putting into it, and my challenges along the way so that other people can see what it's like, what's possible, and the good and the bad of free selling. So today I'm going to be sharing my numbers for March as well as some of my best sales and my goals for next month. So if you're interested to see what I made as a part-time reseller, go ahead and keep watching and I'm going to share all my numbers with you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop onto my computer right here and I'm going to go into Vendu, which kind of shows you all my analytics and all of my totals for the month. So let's do that. Okay, so now we're in my Vendu account and I'm just gonna go over here to analytics and we're going to select custom and look at the month of March. So here you'll see my total revenue was $723 and my total profit was $356. So if we divide 356, 18 divided by 723, our profit margin is about 49%, which is pretty typical of my business, about 50%. So you'll see that I sold 23 items compared to 20 items in end of January through February. It, it um, compares to the same amount of days. So since February is a short month, it's comparing to end of Jan January through the end of February. Um, I listed way less items. I only did 27 items in March compared to 64 the previous period. And then my average sale price did go down about 4% from 3284 to 3143. Um, you can see I sold the most around March 14th. And that's actually just a couple of days after sending my items into eBliss who stores and ships my items. That's my fulfillment company that I use. They have probably about 90% of my items and they store and ship it for me. So um, when things go to them, they make it live. And then I usually get a boost in sales like right after they make a bunch of listings live. So I think that's why I got a pretty big boost there. And then we're gonna scroll down. Okay, now we're looking at marketplace, marketplace revenue and profit. You can see eBay is the blue right here. So I did $403 in revenue on eBay, which is about 55%, and then 320 on Poshmark, which is about 44%. So this is really close to 50%. And for me, this is really high for Poshmark. I usually don't do this well on Poshmark. eBay is usually like 70 or 80% of my sales. So I've been really impressed with Poshmark lately. I know a lot of people are having issues with Poshmark because of the algorithm and all that stuff because they changed their search and all of that, but I am finding that Poshmark is working really well for me these days, so I'm super thankful for that. And then you'll see over here, my top selling category is clothing, shoes, and accessories, which makes sense because that's mostly what I sell. And then my top selling subcategory is actually dresses, um, and I sold six items for $208 total, so that tells me, hey, I should really be looking for a lot of dresses because I'm doing really well with them. Um, so it just kind of helps me know what to source in the future because it shows me what I'm doing really well with. So. Let's scroll down a little bit. And then it's we're gonna go to average sales by marketplace. And you can see my average sale on eBay was about $31. And my average sale on Poshmark was about $32, so pretty much the same. And then you'll see down here on eBay, I did 13, or I sold 13 items, and on Poshmark I sold 10 items. So again, it's really funny how high Poshmark is for me because I usually don't do this well on Poshmark. So I'm really happy with my results on Poshmark this month. It's doing really well. So I'm gonna continue listing on Poshmark and I'm super excited about that. And so those are my totals for eBay. And now I'm gonna go over to Toggle, which is what I use to track my time. Okay, now we're in Toggle, which is what I use to track my time. I think it's really important to track your time so you know where you're spending your time and you're making sure that you're optimizing your time and you're not wasting any time. Um, you can figure out where you need to cut time, what's worth the time you're spending and what's not, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go over to Reports and I'm gonna click on this and click on Last Month. So it's gonna look at March. And you'll see all different types of stuff because I have multiple streams of income, which I find really important as an entrepreneur and the sole breadwinner in my family. I like to have a lot of different sources of income, so I'm not relying on one thing, but we're gonna look at reselling specifically. So you'll see reselling right here. So it says I spent a total of almost 12 hours, which is 20% of my time on reselling. So if I click this little thing right here, it's gonna show you 
what I spent my time on. Education is just kind of researching. I might be looking up different brands and just kind of looking stuff up to see how things are selling. I think it's really important to kind of keep up with trends and brands and what's selling. Um, so I do try to spend a little bit of time doing that. I'm not very good at it, but apparently I spent 18 minutes doing that um, last month. Flip is an app where you can either um, bid on items to sell on consignment for other sellers or put your items up for people to bid on so that they can sell your items on consignment. And I do the second one. I like to send some of the items that I might not be able to sell for more than $30 to Flip. That way we split the profit. They have the items, they list the items, they do all the work and I provide the inventory. Um, this is something I'm gonna be trying to do more and more in the coming months because it's a good way to make a little bit of money without me having to put a lot of effort into it. Um, and since I'm already shopping at the bins anyway, I like to grab stuff that I know will sell, but only sell the stuff myself that I know I can sell for about $30 or more. And then you'll see I spent about three and a half hours on inventory, which is basically just me processing new inventory and putting it into my spreadsheet so that I know what I have, how much I paid, and all that stuff. I spent an hour and 14 minutes listing. I spent an hour and 11 minutes taking photos, five minutes doing research. Usually I actually put this into inventory, so I would normally categorize that together because I do research on items as I'm doing my inventory so that I have all that ready to go when it's time to list. Um, I spent 36 minutes shipping and I spent four hours sourcing. I spent 25 minutes on Vendu and then I spent 10 minutes relisting on Vendu, which is my cross-posting software. I should probably can just consolidate this and put it under just Vendu because I, it's what I used to cross-post, delist, relist, and all that kind of stuff. So um, about 35 minutes total doing that. So all in all, I spent about 12 hours reselling in the month of March. All right, so now let's go over my top sales. Like I mentioned, I try to only sell items that I can list for $30 or more. Of course, that doesn't always happen just because I list something for $30 doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to sell it for $30. So out of the 23 items that I sold, six of them sold for $30 or more. So I'm gonna share those six items with you as my top sales for March. I'll share what the item is, where I sold it, um, about how long it took to sell, I'll also share what it sold for, and then my profit after platform fees, so like eBay or Poshmark fees, eBliss fees um, for items that they store and ship for me, the cost of goods, and any shipping that I paid myself. So my biggest sale in March was a Nils, like a retro ski jacket. Um, I actually bought this last summer at a yard sale for $5, and, and it took me a really long time to get it up. I really should have had it up in like November or even October because that is the season that we need to be selling ski wear and snow jackets, but I just did not get it up in time. So um, I got this up in March and it sold in March. So so it sold on Poshmark in under a month for $62. I paid $5 for it and I didn't have to pay any um, fees to eBliss because it was something that I had stored in my own office. So my profit was $44.60. The next thing I sold was a black Diane von Furstenberg dress. Um, it was like an older style, so I wasn't really sure when I was at the thrift store if I should pick it up or not, but I went ahead and picked it up because how do you pass that up? So I had it listed for just a couple of weeks. I got, I had it listed at about $50, I think, and I took a $40 offer. It sold in less than a month and I paid $7.99 for it at the regular Goodwill. So my profit after everything was $19.01. Next up was an Eileen Fisher sweater that I actually wanted to keep, but I decided to sell it because I have plenty of clothes in my own closet. I actually source it at a fill -a bag sale um, that I actually did a haul for. If you wanna check out that haul, I'll link to it in a card up above. So I had it listed for 40. I took an offer for 36 on Poshmark. I paid about 50 cents for it. And after everything, my profit was 23.30. So those are my top three sales and those were all on Poshmark, which again, I'm super impressed with how Poshmark is doing for my business right now because I just never really did that well on Poshmark. So I'm really excited at where we're going with Poshmark. And then the next three actually sold on eBay. So the first one is a human bean sweatshirt. Um, it's a coffee shop here. I don't know if it's just in the Pacific Northwest or what, but I've seen a couple of them here in Oregon and I haven't really seen them anywhere else. So I'm assuming it's an Oregon or a Pacific Northwest coffee shop, um, one of those drive-through coffee shops. And this actually sold on eBay and took about six months to sell. I wasn't sure if it was gonna sell, but eventually it did for $30. My cost on it was only 43 cents because I got it at the bins. So after everything, my profit was $16.80. Next is a Bowden dress that I actually source at the regular Goodwill. I don't do a lot of sourcing at the regular thrift store just because they're so expensive and I highly prefer the bins. Um, but I did grab this Bowden dress. It was a solid linen dress, so I thought it would do okay. 
Um, so it did sell, but unfortunately it is on its way back to me because they did open a return recently. Um, but I did want to include it because it did sell and they're returning it based on fit. So it sold on eBay in less than a month. I paid $7.99 for it at the regular Goodwill and it sold for $30 plus shipping. So after everything, my profit was $13.92. And then the last one was this Alchemy Equipment shirt. I had never heard of it before, but I looked at the tag at the bins and I looked it up and I found that this brand actually sells really well. Um, it's merino wool. So I grabbed it and decided to give it a shot. Comps on this type of shirt were actually a little bit higher than what it sold for, but I did find a tiny hole, which I obviously disclosed in the title and the description. And I added a picture of it into the listing so that it was very clear that there was a tiny hole. Um, so I did list it a little bit lower than the other comps were listed at, but it did end up selling on eBay after four days for $29.99. Like I said, I got it at the bins and paid about 83 cents for it. So my profit after everything was $19.67. So those were the six things that did end up selling for $30 or more. Like I said, my goal is to try and only list items that are gonna sell for $30 or more because I am trying to do this part-time, spend as little time as possible on it, and because I send a lot of my items to eBlist to um, store and ship for me, I do have a little bit extra overhead costs, so I wanna make sure I can still make a profit after that. So um, hopefully as I stock my store, I can stock with more items that are higher priced and make more profit on each item, but those are the items that I did really well on this month. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how March went. I only spent about 12 hours working, and like I said, we did a little over $700 in sales. I'm hoping to see an upward trend um, as we continue to add more things to our store. My goal for April is to get 50 new listings up um, and sent to eBliss for them to store and ship for me because I'm gonna have this baby soon and I want as little as possible in my office that I have to ship myself. Um, so I wanna get 50 listings up and sent to eBliss. And then I'm finding because I'm sending things in bulk to eBliss about once a month, my sales after the first few weeks kind of trickle um, down and I don't sell quite as much when it's been three or four weeks since I've sent items and made new listings live um, because they make them live when they get there. So if I send 50 new items, all of a sudden I have 50 new items in the store and then nothing else is really getting listed unless it's something I'm keeping in my office, which is rare. So what I wanna do is start relisting five items a day. Um, my goal is to relist items every month or so um, just to keep things moving and keep things fresh in my store. Usually about a month or two your impressions kind of get lower and the chance of your item selling get a little bit lower. So relisting an item kind of gives it a boost. So I wanna start relisting five items a day on eBay and on Poshmark to kind of keep those listings fresh and to hopefully get more sales in those in-between periods where a bunch of new listings are not going up. So we'll see how things go with April and I will check in again with you at the end of April. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.